Hello, so today we're going to be learning how to build a sequence recognizer with circuit. And the sequence we're interested in is a sequence of binary bits. Uh, and then this would be an input bit stream that comes from the computer or somewhere else. And today we're going to be recognizing the pattern 1101. So you're thinking how might we be able to recognize uh, a whole sequence of bits since the circuit can only really work with one bit at a time. So we can do this with some form of memory. And for us today, we're going to use the flip-flops for our memory. And the flip-flops are sequential circuits uh, that store the next state and outputs the current state. We have another lecture talking about that in more detail. For now, just know that it stores something that's coming out next. And on the next rising clock edge, then this Q output will become whatever the current state stored is. Okay, so for us, we need to store four states of information, right? We need to store all four bits of information. So we need to store that the most significant bit is one, the next most significant bit is 1, the second least significant bit is 0, and the next significant bit, the least significant bit is uh, is 1. And you're saying, why are you drawing this in the opposite way? Uh, because our bit stream comes, let's say it comes this way, and you, you want to be saying, oh, I read a 1 first, and then I read another one, the stream is moving this way. And then you read a zero, and then you finally read a one, and that matches the pattern. So we need a D flip-flop to recognize every one of those states. Okay, so you're saying, well, this output should go into this input. And why is that? Because we want to keep track concurrently of each state, right? There are going to be more than four inputs, and we're not just trying to keep track of four states. So the input stream is feeding in right here, and whatever goes out here um, to the output stream or something, that's okay. So these are the four next states that we want to keep track of. And the current states are coming out here. So we're most interested in the current state. So this one should go here. This one should go here. Zero should be here. And one should be here. Whenever this condition happens, we want to output a one because we found the pattern, right? So how do we do that? Uh, well, if you if you remember, we have logic gates as well, so we're going to use the AND gate because we're saying we want to meet all four of these conditions. The first wire is one. The second wire also has to be one. This wire is different because it has to be zero. In order for it to be an AND gate and output a one, we need it to be a one, so we put a NOT gate on it. And then the last is also a one. Whenever all those conditions are met, then it outputs a one. So let's call our output F or something. And this is a simple, naive solution with four D flip flops. But D flip flops are a lot of uh, a lot of gates and a lot of transistors. And there's also a problem with this, is that these clocks might not be synchronized. We want them to always move at the same time, to move one bit, everything one bit moved down at a time. But unfortunately, that doesn't always happen because uh, of clocking skews. 
the takes for this one it might be true it might work but say you are recognizing a pattern of um, 100 bits then the wire length is going to be very long for the clock and it might take a while for say the uh, wire information to get the rising clock to get from this one to this one because of the sheer wire length and this will cause a clocking skew which we'll also talk about later but for now uh, for our situation we're going to assume this is okay um, but what can we do to minimize the number of the flip-flops? So what we can do is we can actually build a finite state machine. So let's do that right now. Uh, what is a finite state machine? Well, it's a machine that stores a current state. And depending on the type of finite machine, it could either output based on the current state or it could output based on the current state and input. So these are the two different uh, finite state machines known as melee and more state machines. Uh, we'll have another lecture talking about the differences between melee and more. Uh, but for this case, let's build a melee state machine because they tend to have less states and they tend to be uh, easier to deal with. So how many states do you think we need? We actually still need four states, each to keep track of where we currently are. Um, so for simplicity, let's name the states with what inputs they have. Well, we're trying to recognize 1101. And for this one, uh, it's just the beginning state, it's the initial state. So it doesn't need to have anything. So let's just call it blank state. On the input of 1, we're successfully moving to another state with 1 that's one step closer toward the correct sequence that we're recognizing. So this will take an input of 1. And these same machines are the same machine that de where the output depends on the input and the state. So we need to indicate the input here. The state is where the arrow is coming from and the output here. So it would intake, it'd take a one and output a zero because it hasn't found the pattern yet. But what about if it takes in zero? Well, it doesn't really matter because uh, we still haven't found the, even the starting bit of our pattern. So we will just loop at the current state and keep out putting zero. Now we're at a state with one one. If we have one zero, then everything breaks. Uh, because we don't have the right starting bit anymore. So we'll take a zero and output a zero. But if we have another one, then we successfully got the second bit of our pattern. So this is, let's use this state to denote one, one. And then this would be taking a one, output a zero. At this state, if you output a zero, if you input a zero, that's great because we now have one one zero, which is another step closer to finding our correct state. Excuse me. So we'll take in zero and output zero because we don't have our pattern yet. Uh, what if we have a one? Well, we'll still be having two ones because the last one is a one. And if the current input is one, we'll still be having two ones. So we'll take in a one, output a zero. Now we're at this state. This is a one, one, zero state. If we take a zero, then everything is over. Um, at the start at the beginning again, because our bits don't match again. However, if we take in a one, we don't go back to the beginning, but we go back to the place with a single one, because you had a zero and then you had a one. So one is right here. So in this place, the state is actually better denoted as 0, 1, because if it's 1, 1, it will be here. So this one, we found the whole pattern. We found 1, 1, 0, and 1. So you're taking a 1, and you'll output a 1. So this is probably the most important transition. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to turn this finite state machine into a state table, 
and then into an excitation table, and then into a circuit.